Hi, I'm Derek Downing, a developer advocate for Google Cloud. In the last video, I highlighted different options for controlling the database behavior for my banking application that I'm deploying to Cloud Spanner. In this video, I'm going to show how Spanner organizes data into splits and how that impacts the design of the database schema. I will also highlight the tools available in Spanner for efficient schema design and how to keep the schema updated with online schema changes. To start, Cloud Spanner is a row-based relational database. Spanner requires a defined schema and supports standard SQL concepts for defining that schema. Table columns must have a data type defined. Spanner supports standard scalar data types, as well as more advanced data types to enable different application requirements. For instance, JSON allows storing schemaless data within Spanner. Constraints, foreign keys, and unique indexes help enforce the integrity of the data. And unique and non-unique indexes help provide faster lookups of the data. A key reason to use Spanner is the near unlimited scaling capability for application workloads. When designing that schema, it's important to understand how Spanner organizes data to achieve the scalability. As a horizontally scaling database, Spanner automatically shards data into splits. Splits enable Spanner to scale by distributing compute capacity to multiple servers. But how do these splits affect the design decisions for my schema? For a quick example from my banking app, I have a customer's table with a customer ID as primary key. A common pattern in many relational databases is to increment an integer for new rows. With data splits, sequential keys are an anti-pattern because your last split will receive all new rows, creating a hotspot. Ideally, the primary key should be inserted in random order, so inserts hit multiple splits, which improves write scaling. Common methods to get random order inserts are UUID version 4 or generating hash keys. Splits also have implications for related data in other tables. In my app, a customer can have multiple accounts. The account's data could end up in a different split than the customer it belongs to. If I have a query to get a customer and their accounts, Spanner will have to get data from multiple splits. This increases request latency, especially if the splits are processed by different servers. To avoid this, tables can be interleaved together in the schema definition. If I interleave accounts into the customer's table, then the account rows will be located in the same split as the customer they belong to and make my query faster. Keep in mind that interleaving cannot be changed for existing tables, and not all table relationships should be interleaved. Interleaving should be used for related data that is frequently accessed together. Splits also affect indexes because Spanner implements indexes as tables internally. So requesting more columns than an index provides can result in getting data from multiple splits. Creating an index that stores columns that are typically requested by queries can solve this. In my app, the unique username index also stores the password. So a login query that searches for a combination of username and password will be done efficiently. The last thing to highlight about Spanner schema design is that schema changes are online. So your application can continue reading and writing to the table during the change. The time to complete a change depends on the type of change. Adding a new column that doesn't have a default value will complete quickly since there's nothing to do for existing rows. Adding a new column or modifying an existing column with a default value requires backfilling data into each existing row of the table. Modifying an existing column with a new constraint, such as not null, will require data validation. Data validation and backfilling operations take longer to complete, but Spanner will process this in the background so that your users and applications are not impacted. This makes schema changes painless. As a relational database, Spanner requires a defined schema using supported data types, constraints, and indexing but it makes it as easy as possible to change later as data requirements change. Data in Spanner is automatically sharded into splits that can be powered by different compute nodes to achieve great scalability. 
Splits require different schema design choices than traditional relational database systems. And I've shown how to avoid hotspotting and how to interleave related data together so query requests are handled efficiently. In the final video, I will show how our banking app uses both standard DML statements and Spanner mutations to write to our Spanner database.